If you're just starting your journey towards tech interviews, trust me, this problem is really, really important. And it is one of the favorites of so many tech companies. What makes this problem so special is that it navigates beautifully how you start to understand the problem and then make your way all the way towards an efficient approach. Why is that so? Let us try to find it out. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And yes, I've got some gold. But anyways, first of all, what we're going to do is we will understand the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Going forward, we will try to solve this problem using a brute force approach. Then we will start optimizing it. We'll optimize it for time and then we will optimize it for space. Ultimately, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an array of integers and you have to find the majority element. So what is a majority element? A majority element is one that occurs more than n by two times, where n is the total number of elements present in the array, right? So if an array has 10 elements, then the majority element will be one that occurs more than 10 by two, that is more than five times, right? To understand it better, let us look at a sample test case. In our first test case, you can see that the value of n is 3, right? Because it has 3 elements. So therefore, n by 2 will be equal to 1.5. And thus, you need to find the majority element that occurs 2 times or more than 2 times, right? So when you look at this array, you can see that the element 3 occurs 2 times, correct? So for a test case number 1, 3 will be your answer. 3 is the majority element, correct? Similarly, let us look at our second test case. In our second test case, once again, what you do is you find the value of n, that will be 7. So n by 2 will be 3.5. So you need to look for a majority element that occurs more than 4 times or just 4, right? So when you look at this array, you can see that the element 2 is occurring 4 times. And hence, 2 is the majority element. So for a test case number 2, 2 will be your answer. Now, for this problem, it is guaranteed that the array will have a majority element. There could be some other problem or some other scenarios where the array may or may not have a majority element, but that depends upon the problem. In this problem specifically, there will be a majority element and that is guaranteed. So now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and see how you're gonna approach this problem. As I said earlier, this problem is interviewer's favorite because it helps the interviewer to judge how the candidate is thinking. So when you're given this problem and you have said that, okay, now try to solve this problem. What do you do? First of all, as a good developer, you will always try to come up with a brute force solution because that can guarantee you if a solution to this problem even exists. So what you're going to do is you say that, okay, I'll do one thing. I'll say that, okay, how many times can I find the element one? So you will traverse through the array and you can say that, okay, one, two, you found the element one, two times, right? And then you're going to look for element two. You find the element two, four times, right? And then at the last, you're going to look for element three. How many times do you find the element? You only find it one time, right? Next, you need to say that, okay, the size of the array is seven. So n by two will be equal to 3.5. And hence, I need to find some majority element that occurs four or more times. And voila, you can find this over here, right? You can say that, okay, two is my majority element. So you were able to arrive at a solution, right? And that's perfect. But then the interview will say, okay, you are taking a lot of time. And why is that so? Because to find out the frequency of each of this element, you are traversing through the array again and again, right? First of all, you traverse the array for element one, then you traverse the array for element 2, and then you traverse the array for element 3. So in this case, your time complexity is very high. Your interviewer will say, okay, I need a better solution. So what can you do about it? And once again, you have the same problem and you have a fresh sheet of paper in front of you. And you are asked, okay, optimize the solution, correct? So when it comes to array-based problems and integers, you should always try to sort your array because sorting can really help you to arrive at an answer. And think about it for a second. Suppose you have this array in front of you, right? And you try to sort this array. What will happen? When you sort it, all the similar elements will come together, right? 
So all the ones will get collected together, all the twos will get collected together, and all the threes will get collected together, right? And whatever will be the majority element in the array, you know that the majority element is going to occupy a size greater than half the size, right? So if your array size is 10, then there will be more than five elements that will be the majority element, right? If your array size is 20, then 10 of the elements will be the same, right? So what you can say is that once your array is sorted, all the majority elements will lie somewhere in the array, right? It They could all lie in the beginning. They could all lie at the very end. They could all lie somewhere in the middle or they can lie somewhere else, right? Anywhere in between. But the major point that you have to notice is that the majority element, it will always pass through the center of the array, right? And that is because the majority element occurs more than n by two times. And you cannot have a combination where the majority element will not be at the center. So this tells me, right? If I sort the array and if I look at the middle element, that will be my majority element, right? So that is exactly what we do. We take this array and then we sort it. What happens then? You get a sorted array, right? And the next step is simply look at the middle element of the array. And this element will be the majority element. So you can safely say that for this particular problem, two will be a majority element. And this is the reason because it is guaranteed that the majority element will pass through the center, right? So this should make your interviewer a little happy. You did not iterate through the array again and again. You just sorted it once and returned the middle element, right? But when it comes to sorting, what is the best time complexity that you can have? You can have a time complexity of order n log n, right? That is the fastest one, quick sort, unless there are special cases, correct? So your interview say that, okay, I'm still not satisfied. I need an even better approach. What can you do about it? So you see why this problem is interesting. It will keep on poking you again and again to come up with a better approach. And now you'll think, okay, what can I do next? So once again, you would refresh your mind and you have the same problem and a blank sheet of paper. The ideas are endless. What can you do? Well, you tried sorting the array, right? But we did not try. Okay, what if I can take a help of an additional data structure? Maybe that can help me with time. So this is one approach. What you can do is you can take a help of a hash table, right? So this hash table will store all the numbers in your keys column and all the frequencies in the value column. So what we're going to do in this case is we will start iterating through the array from the beginning. I see one number, I see two. So I put two in my hash table and I put its frequency as one. Now move ahead. The next element I see is two again. Check your hash table. Two is already present, right? So if an element is present, just increment its frequency. Correct. Now move on. You see element one. Check your hash table. This element does not exist. So you will add this number and put its frequency as one. Similarly, you will keep on going along. You will see three. Three is not present over here. So I'm going to add three and put its frequency as one. Next, I get a one again. One is present in the table. So I will update its frequency. Now I get a two again check its frequency and update it. The last element is two again, check its frequency and ultimately update it. Now, in just one iteration, you were able to find out the frequency of each element, right? And you already know that the majority element will have a frequency of four or more, correct? So you just scan through your hash table once and say that, okay, two will be your majority element. And voila, you were able to optimize your code, correct? In just one scan, you were able to determine the majority element, correct? But this time, what did you do? You took help of an additional data structure, right? And that means you took some extra space. This is where your interviewer will catch you again. And he will say, okay, I do not want you to use any extra space. What do you do now? So this is why I keep saying that this problem is really interesting. And the last solution that I'm going to offer you will really blow your mind. It is so simple and you will say that, hey, why didn't I think of it before? So what do you do about it? When it comes to majority, what comes to your mind? Well, you can say that voting comes to your mind, right? Because based on number of votes, a certain candidate can get elected, right? If there are a thousand people and the candidate gets more than 500 votes, they are a majority and they form a government. So 
we can try to apply the same voting algorithm on this problem as well. So I have the same array with me and then I will try to determine who is the majority and how many votes they have. So starting off with my first candidate, someone comes and they vote for candidate two. So what I can say is that, okay, right now two has a majority and they have one vote, correct? Next, one more person comes and they vote for two. So what I'm saying gonna say is, okay, the number of votes for two increased by one. So I do a plus one over here, right? Now moving along, a third person comes and they vote for one. So two lost a vote, right? So I'm gonna reduce this count, but we do not update the majority element because it could still be possible that two might win again. Now move ahead. The next person votes for three. So two lost his vote again and his total number of votes again became zero. So now you are in a dilemma. Okay, who has the majority? Do you remember how in the beginning we chose two as our majority candidate? So this time it could be possible that, okay, three could be a possible candidate, right? And three will have one vote, right? Because he just got the vote. Now move ahead. A next candidate came in again and they voted for one. So once again, three lost a vote, their votes became zero. And it could be possible that one is a new candidate, right? And he got one vote, correct? Based on a similar idea, just go ahead. One more candidate comes and they vote for two again. So check the votes. This vote reduces to zero. And now no one has a majority again. Let us say that two will be the majority. So I'm going to choose two as a majority element and their vote counts get updated to one. Move ahead for one last time and you see two again. So what does that mean? The number of votes of two increased by one and we have reached the very end. Everyone has casted their votes, correct? And what do you see over here? You see that two is the majority element in the array, correct? So you see how in just one iteration, we did not take any extra space and we were able to determine the majority element in the array. Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement the solution. And on the right, I have this sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function majority element. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving ahead with the dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we choose a majority element and we say that, okay, let the first element be the majority element. And I give them one vote, right? Now, as the next step, what we'll do is we will start a for loop that will start from the first element and go all the way up to the end, right? So we will get the vote of each person, correct? So now in this loop, what do we do? If the vote counts become zero at any point, we update our majority element and we increase the vote count back to one, right? And if our current number equals the majority element, we will increase the number of votes. Else what we do if someone casted a vote for the other person, we decrease their vote count, right? So this loop will go on and at the very end, whatever will be the majority value, that will be your majority element in the array, right? Note that this part of the code is doing exactly what I just explained you a few seconds ago, right? So the time complexity of this solution is order of n because we iterate through the array only once and the space complexity of this solution is order of one because we do not take any extra space to arrive at a solution. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that I know this problem is not very difficult and after some iterations, you will be able to arrive at an efficient solution. And even if you practice on lead code, you will ultimately get an accepted solution. But the interesting part and the beautiful part about this problem is there are so many ways to solve it. And I would highly recommend you to go on and explore all of them because that will segue and open a gateway to you to attack more problems and it will show you ways how you can look at new problems. So when you are approaching such problems, try to come up with new solutions. Try to optimize for time as much as you can. Try to optimize for your space as much as you can. Because these problems are not very complex, they are very simple, right? So it kind of helps you to widen your brain and your thinking power. So always watch out. What other problems did you find that can be solved in a so many number of ways? While going through this video, did you face any problems? 
Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this problem is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya!